Ligaments are the tissues that connect bone to bone for movement and support. As a joint is made through connection of two or more bones, there exist many ligaments to make it stable. In the case of a wrist joint, a set of four ligaments is important to know about. They are palmar radiocarpal ligament, dorsal radiocarpal ligament, ulnar collateral ligament, and radial collateral ligament. So you see, one ligament on the palmar surface, that is palmar radiocarpal. On the dorsal surface, we have dorsal radiocarpal and two on each lateral sides. Ulnar collateral ligament towards ulna or little finger. Radial collateral ligament towards radius or thumb. That's how you can remember them easily. Now diving in the details of each. So let's start with the palmar surface. Which ligament is present on the palmar surface? Yes, palmar radiocarpal ligament. As the name indicates, the palmar radiocarpal ligament must be between the radius and the carpal on the palmar surface of the wrist. Palmar surface means towards your palm. It appears as V-shaped when viewed collectively with palmar allocarpal ligament. It originates from anterior border of radius and goes distally towards carpal bones including scaphoid, lunate and capitate bones. Now it consists of four major parts. radio capitate ligament, radio lunate ligament, long radio lunate ligament, short radio lunate ligament. So these all make the radiocarpal ligament. Coming to radioscapho capitate ligament. As the name indicates, it involves all of radial, scaphoid and capitate bones. The lateral side of the joint capsule is formed by this ligament that goes towards the steloid process of radius. It also extends a few fibers towards trapezium bone forming carpal ligament through the lateral most borders. Coming to radioscapholunate ligament, which consists of the radial artery and anterior introsious neurovascular bundle with few collagen fibers. Normally, it is not preferred to be called a true ligament because it consists of only radial artery, branches, and bundles of introsious neurovascular with a distribution of few collagen fibers. Long radiolunate ligament. Now this ligament runs from distal radius towards lunate bone along with the ulnar border of the radioscaphocapitate ligament. It was also called as radiolunotriquetral ligament in literature. Short radiolunate ligament, which is located at the margin of lunate fossa of distal radius that extends forward to the palmar margin of the lunate bone. Why is this ligament important? It is important to support the hand following the forearm during supination. It provides stability to the wrist joint and prevents the overextension. So we are done with the palmar surface. Moving towards the dorsal surface. Which ligament was present here? C. This is the dorsal surface opposite to the palm of hand. So the dorsal radiocarpal ligament is present here. So you can say it is the counterpart of palmar radiocarpal ligament, but it is not that much strong. As arising from dorsal radial tubercle, it is divided into two parts, wider superficial part and narrow deep part. The superficial part runs in between the distal radius and dorsal surface of the triquetrum bone, while the narrower part is medial to dorsal tubercle that has a point of attachment on lunotriquetral introsious ligament. So what is this ligament useful for? It helps to reduce the full flexion of our wrist joint, as you can see this ligament is preventing to fully flex your hand. Moving towards the two lateral ligaments of the wrist joint, remember 
both form the word lateral ulnar collateral ligament and radio collateral ligament both function collectively to prevent dislocation of the lateral joints so the ulnar collateral ligament arises from the ulnar steloid process and runs towards triquetrum and pisiform radial collateral ligament arises from the radial steloid process towards the carpal bones including the scaphoid and trapezium a fifth ligament called the palmar ulnocarpal ligament is present that prevents adduction movement of the wrist joint it also prevents the translocation of ulnar carpal bones to allow free movements of hand so in the very next section let's learn about the different movements of our wrist joints so let's go ahead Thank you.